you're at home, I'm at home, our congregations are at home for an indefinite period of time. So in this video, we're going to construct from the ground up a meaningful and powerful online church service. We'll explore specific service elements, recording options, and special considerations to make church online the absolute best it can be. Well, hey there, my name is Brady Shearer. This is Pro Church Tools, a channel dedicated to helping your church navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. Subscribe to this channel because we are publishing new content every single week to help you and your church get through this tricky season. We talk about all the things in the world of digital media, so make sure you are subscribed so you're notified of future content releases. Now, this video you're watching right now is actually part two. So if you haven't watched the first video that we published earlier this week, make sure to go back and do that. We'll have it linked in the description below because it's in that video where we talk about casual online church versus formal online church. Basically, does it make sense to just recreate your normal in-person Sunday service for online? Or is there more that can be done? And spoiler alert, we think there's a lot more that can be done. And there are very important reasons why. In this video, we're talking about the what. But in part one, we talked about the why. And that foundation is crucial to making sense of all this. So make sure to go back, watch it if you haven't already. With that out of the way, let's begin constructing an ideal online church service. And I'm going to walk you through a process here in this video. But I've also created a Google Doc that's linked in the description below that summarizes this entire process so you can take your team through it. So make sure to take advantage of that. It's a free Google Doc linked below. Let's begin with part one. What is your church's desired outcome with a service? Because before we can begin ordering different service elements, we need to know our goals. Said differently, before we decide which route to take, we first need to know our destination. And in my mind, this is a gift for you as a church. Because when you think of an in-person gathering on a Sunday morning, a normal Sunday service, you've probably got a pretty good picture of what that looks like in most church settings. But for online church, there's really no established routine or structure that you must follow. You've got a complete blank canvas. This is your chance to innovate, to try something new, to take a risk, because we're all more open to change right now than we normally are. And these opportunities are rare, so I don't want you to overlook that. So what is your church's desired outcome with an individual church service? Here are some potential answers for this question. Your goal could be to mobilize the saints, meaning there's a lot of need in the world right now, and your church wants to actively be the church meeting the needs of your community. Your goal could be to administer hope. A lot of people are despairing right now, and you want to remind them of the hope they have in Christ. Your goal could be to foster community. We're, of course, physically distanced right now, so you could aim to create space for online community to take place. These are just a few examples, and there are really so many more possibilities. So I want to encourage you to discover what is unique and right for your church in this season. Next, part two. What is your church's desired outcome for the next three months? or however long in-person gatherings end up being suspended. Now, you might have been wondering with part one of this exercise, can we have more than one desired outcome for a service? And my recommendation here would be no. Choose one desired outcome, stay laser focused, and craft each service element toward that single goal. But we're gonna be at this for a little while, it seems. You might have 12 weeks, let's say, of consecutive online church services ahead of you. So you can have different goals for different services. This question here wants you to begin with the end in mind. How do you and your church wanna come out of this season? At the end of these next six, 12, 24 weeks, whatever it may be, where do you want your church to be? These desired outcomes could be congregation-centric, but they could also be organization-centric. Maybe there are some culture issues in leadership in your church that you'd like to tend to. Well, again, you've got a blank slate here for a prolonged period of time, and this may be the best season to see that transformation take place because change is happening regardless, and so I'd really like that change to be the kind of change our churches could benefit from. Okay, now let's dive into specifics. First, recording options. 
Remember, we're leaning into the casual living room style of online church as we established in part one. Knowing that, my two preferred methods for recording would be live streaming from your mobile device or pre-recording on a DSLR or mirrorless camera and creating a mock live stream with the premiere function of platforms like Facebook and YouTube. Since the stay-at-home mandates have been put into place, I have very much enjoyed both of these kinds of services. And with both, you can leverage what you have already in terms of gear and tech. And really, please, just don't feel any lesser if you're live streaming from your mobile device. Movie stars, professional athletes, famous recording artists are all doing live programming from their phones while they stay at home. And guess what? People are loving it because it's intimate, personal, and real. The same goes for your church. You can dress it up if you want by recording ahead of time, but don't underestimate the power and effectiveness of connecting to someone directly through a live stream on your phone. This is not the lesser option. For many of you, it'll be the preferred option. And this is why I started with those two questions. Let your desired outcome be your compass and litmus test for making decisions, not, oh, this is what this church down the road is doing, or, well, this is how we normally do it on Sundays. This is unventured territory. Freedom to explore and try whatever you think will help you reach your destination. So beware of the pull to fall back into just doing things how we've always done them. Let's talk about length now. Your online church services will benefit from being shorter than your in-person services. Why? Well, because you don't have your congregation's captive attention in the same way. Their kids are not in kids ministry. They're with them, climbing on them. People aren't sitting in a pew free from distractions in your sanctuary. They're in their own home, free to wander and roam. So I would start by making your online church service maybe 50% of the length of your in-person service. But I really think the sweet spot is probably around 20 to 30 total minutes. Because keep in mind, longer does not mean more effective. Otherwise, the average church service would be four hours or eight hours. But it's not. Why? Well, because at a certain point, the longer you go, you actually become less effective. And those limits are much shorter online than they are in person in your sanctuary. You'll need to account and adjust for that. And what's cool about online church is that this doesn't even need to be a guessing game. The online platforms will give you the data and you can see what the average watch time is. You can see when people drop off and you can use that to inform your decisions on length. Let's talk now about service elements. This is not an exhaustive list, but here are the service elements that I considered. Worship, preaching, communion, prayer, call to action. Now, there are certainly more options, but let's talk about these a bit. What you'll want to do is select service elements that will help you accomplish your desired outcome. So for instance, if your desired outcome is to mobilize the saints, you'll need to include a call to action service element. Think of this like an announcement, except the purpose of it is to explain what needs exist in your community and how you plan on meeting them and what you'll need from your congregation and then call them to action. Maybe your desired outcome is to administer hope. If so, perhaps your service would go like this. Start with a hope-themed worship song, followed by a 12-minute hope-themed message, and end it off with communion using whatever elements are available to people in their homes. Another option with service elements and programming overall is to not do them all at once consecutively on a single day like a traditional in-person service. You could do your 10 to 20 minute message on Sundays. You could do communion Wednesday nights, joint worship on Tuesdays. I attended a communion that a church was hosting on a Wednesday night last week. And all I had with me at the time was a square of dark chocolate and some water. And I took communion with the two pastors on this live stream live streaming directly from their phone and it was so meaningful and you know maybe your church doesn't do communion that often well perhaps now is the time to do it because it is physically involved unlike most church service elements and that really fits a need right now as we are all physically distanced so again it all comes back to that desired outcome for an individual service and your desired outcome for this entire prolonged period of physical distancing what service elements will help you with your goals? And how must you shape and adjust those service elements from what you're traditionally used to? Make sure to grab the Google Doc linked in the description below that walks you through the entire process for thoughtfully planning an online church service in 2020. And if you take away anything from this video, just remember, now is the time to try something new. 
Now is the time to innovate because change is upon us, whether you would have chosen it or not. You can resist that change, but it's like a wave in the ocean. Sure, you can stand up against it, but it's just gonna barrel over you either way. So ride the wave while you can, because it won't last forever, and use it as a positive force in your church, because these opportunities are rare. So let's take advantage of them as much as we can. Again, thank you for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. We'll have plenty more content coming to help your church navigate this season. So subscribe, hit the little church bell to turn on notifications so you never miss new videos as they drop and become available. We release videos every Tuesday and Thursday. I'm Brady Shearer signing off for now. We'll talk soon. The way that he hides his stain, whack, clever. Oh. <laughs> The way that he gets his oil, frack. <laughs> the way he takes his coffee, black. The way that he loves his art, attack. <laughs> <laughs>